Well, hello there. This, my friends, is a one terabyte, three and a half inch hard drive. It runs off a SATA 6 gigabit per second interface, and you might find these common among desktop systems. And they're still widely available. People still purchase one of these drives because they're like super cheap, $50. You'll get a one terabyte hard drive, no problem. Now, you might recall these type of drives sold in external enclosures about 10 years ago with a SATA to USB interface. They require separate power adapters, and you know people use these as external storage solutions or external storage drives. But now it's 2017, so what's popular? Well, these guys right here, portable SSDs. Look at the size difference. Now, obviously, you know, we really can't compare them because the price-wise, you know, this is four times more expensive than this drive right here. But you know, being able to toss this around in your backpack and just carry it around, fit in your pocket, is kind of amazing. So let's take a look at this right after a message from our sponsor. Explore your future with the Cosmos 2 case and celebrate 25 years of ambition that drives Cooler Master forward. Enjoy the familiar yet still forward-looking character of the frame with solid aluminum handles. It may be the most physical you'll ever get with the computer case, but it's all worthwhile. Or get creative with any of the 13 storage options that encourage outside-the-box thinking. Meanwhile, the curved tempo glass panels on both sides ensures a lasting impression. Classically trained, but still ready for anything. The Cooler Master Cosmos 2. Let's celebrate the past by building for the future. As always, let's start with the design because it's a unique one compared to the Samsung T3 and the PNY SSD. There is a mix of plastic and aluminum throughout the body and it feels rock solid in the hand. WD claims that it can withstand drops up to six and a half feet but I'm not gonna try that because I take good care of my products. Now, price-wise, you're looking at $100 for the 256 gig base model. Uh, bumping that up to 512 runs you around $180. And finally, the top of the line one terabyte model costs around uh, $360. And that's what we'll be using to run the benchmarks. When you compare it to something like the T3 from Samsung that costs $400, for the one terabyte variant, the WD drive offers a lot more with $40 shaved off that price point. And here's why. Unlike the T3 that uses a USB 3.1 Type-C Gen 1 standard, the Passport runs on a Type-C 3.1 Gen 2 interface. That means theoretically this drive would run on 10 gigabit per second speeds instead of five, but it would be limited to the internal SSD's performance inside the chassis. I guess we'll find out about that in the benchmarks. On top of that, you get a Type-C to Type-C cable with a standard Type-A adapter. So if you're rocking a desktop or a notebook with a Thunderbolt port or a 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A port, uh, you will be achieving SSD class speeds in an external solution that fits in the palm of your hand. Do note that it is reverse compatible with USB 3.0 and 2.0 standards. Now, Western Digital has built a solid reputation for themselves in the reliability department. And one of them obviously includes taking proper security measures. There's a built-in 256-bit AES hardware encryption module. And when you set it up with WD's security software, your data is secure. This can come in very handy when you're traveling around uh, with confidential files. Plus, it's also cross-compatible with both Mac and PC. So users who are invested in both ecosystems are not left out of the equation. All right, so before I proceed to the performance segment of this video, I need to quickly mention that I recently switched my editing workstation PC to Ryzen. And the reason I say that is because I tested the Samsung and the PNY SSDs on an X79 platform, which is fairly old. So now that I've switched to this new guy right here, uh, let's retest all three SSDs. Okay, so starting with synthetic benchmarks, just like our last comparison, I fired up Crystal Dismark and tested these drives by setting the number of tests at five and a file size of one gigabyte. The results do speak for themselves. The Passport outperforms the PNY and the T3, averaging read speeds of 490 megabytes per second and writes in the low 480s. The 3.1 Gen 2 interface is a huge bonus to unleash the internal SSD's true performance, so we're not bottlenecked by Gen 1 speeds, so that's awesome. Moving on to 80 Disk Benchmark, a program that tests the drive read and write speeds using incremental file sizes, the Passport takes the lead once again, dishing out well over 490 megabytes per second in both read and write performance. The T3 and PNY drive are almost neck to neck in this test, but still, very respectable results from both of them. Onto some real world tests, I transferred a 47 gigabyte folder packed with 4K videos back and forth between the desktop and the drives. So starting with the Passport, that whole folder took two minutes and 36 seconds to transfer to the SSD, averaging between 290 to 360 megabytes per second write. Performing that backwards took a minute and 53 seconds because the read speeds were topping at around 417 megabytes per second. 
that's one of the highest I've come across on a portable SSD. I performed the same task on the other drives and here are the results. The Samsung drive completed the right task 5 seconds faster than the WD drive, but the PNY SSD took a whopping 7 minutes to transfer that folder just like what I experienced when reviewing it. It definitely has to be a miscommunication between the drive cache and the NAND, but on a positive note, the read performance on the PNY was excellent compared to the T3. As you can see, there was more than a minute worth of gap between the two, but when put against the Passport SSD, both of them were forced to bow before the new read performance king. My second test involved another folder transfer consisting of After Effects log files, thumbnail projects, Excel documents, and a few videos. The overall size of that folder was sitting around 5 gigs, so that took about 20 seconds to transfer to the Passport SSD, averaging around 300 megabytes per second write. Performing that backwards took half the time because the read speeds were topping at around 1.5 gigabytes per second at the beginning, but then it dipped to 30 megabytes per second during small file transfers for just a second, and then it picked up right away till 500 megabytes per second upon completion. Now, my desktop's local drive is an RD400 from OCZ, so that sudden peak in 1.5 gigabytes per second must have something to do with the way how the storage controller handles Q depth. This was also fairly evident when testing the other drives. As you can see, the time it took to complete the transfer back and forth were exactly the same among the three. My final test involved rendering a one minute 4K video using Premiere Pro CC 2017 and set the destination to the respective drives per render. The results, only a two second difference between all three with the WD Passport SSD taking the lead. It's honestly not a huge deal even when rendering larger projects like the 7 minute 1080p video upscaled to 4K, the difference isn't that huge between the drives. Be ready for X299 with ASRock's flagship gaming i9 motherboard, the world's first to feature a Quantia 10 gigabit per second LAN port for extreme bandwidth, a 13-phase power design for smooth power delivery and reliable overclocking, and of course, USB 3.1 Type-C that can also charge your devices of up to 36 watts. More info in the description below. So I'm going to leave you guys on this note. The Western Digital My Passport SSD is a fast drive. In fact, it not only costs less than the Samsung T3, but it outperforms the T3 in terms of re-performance. So if your day-to-day -day tasks rely heavily on that process, pick the WD drive. It's a much faster solution. The USB 3.1 Gen 2 interface is so refreshing to see on a portable SSD, not just because of bragging rights, but it eliminates the bottleneck when the SSD is trying so hard to dish out those read and write numbers. So what do you guys think of the Passport SSD from Western Digital? Are you a fan of the design? Plus, what do you think of its performance compared to the Samsung T3 and the PNY SSD? Leave a comment down below. I'm Ebro with Harvard Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next one.